Um, I will try to have uh, some flash talk where we just uh, look at uh, some aspects and I will try to stay in uh, the 10 minute limit. Um, I would like to talk about literate programming and um, uh, what this has to do with force. Um, uh, in the course, we of course learn what literate programming is all about. Um, also, uh, we need to talk about development directions because this has some influence on literate programming. And uh, I also want to have a short uh, look into what um, could be an idea for false literate programming uh, in that you have markdown documents that uh, has pro have prose text and you embed force in that and still can produce nice looking documents and programs out of them. So let's see how this works. So literate programming is actually a programming technique that was invented by Donald Knuth um, in uh, the 1970s, I guess. Uh, uh, so there's a famous uh, article that he wrote and all his uh, tech books are written in that style when he explains the tech program and also Metafont. Mm, he uses this technique. Uh, the idea is that you um, mix uh, prose text that explains how the program works and what it's supposed to do uh, with the actual program and um, not copies of the program, but with the actual program. So you have some kind of literate program that uh, has uh, prose text and program text intermixed. And then you have uh, two extraction programs uh, um, that traditionally have the name weave and tangle. So weave takes a literate program and uh, creates some kind of documentation out of it. And in Knuth's uh, setup, um, the original uh, programs were written in Pascal and weave uh, actually created tech documents that you can later on process to get very nice typeset documents. And the other program is the Tangle program that looks at the same literate program and extracts all the program text. And uh, in Knuth style, uh, you can uh, uh, refer to parts of the program by giving the programming parts names, and then you can just use uh, explanatory texts in and present the program in any order that you intend to do. Uh, for detective and educational purposes or for understanding, you could just uh, talk about the overall structure and then go into detail um, and uh, leave things open and explain them later and so on. And uh, so the programs that he had, the weave and the tangle could deal with this and present uh, the program in any order that you wanted. Um, Right, and this brings us to development directions. So if you think about how you would develop applications, then there are two major directions that you can take. Uh, you can start with building blocks uh, that you know what, that work, and then uh, you collect them and assemble them. Uh, so uh, you uh, create your application by combining these building blocks. And at any point in time, you always have uh, something that works. And if you want to have a picture that looks like this, so you have these building blocks and you build nice buildings from them, uh, which are your applications. And um, so uh, if uh, uh, the, the nice thing about bottom up is that you always have something that already runs. Um, uh, it might not have the full uh, functionality, but at least uh, you can play around with it and uh, bring it into an area that is uh, uh, what you actually want. And in contrast, what you can do, and we heard the top-down uh, term uh, already with the top-down parsers, uh, you go start with the, 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 the complete thing, the, the problem statement in this uh, case, and you decompose the problem statement into sub-problems and the sub-problems and further sub-problems and so on, until you reach parts that you say, okay, I can easily implement this. Yeah. And if you want to, then it, it may look like this. So you have the overall picture and like uh, in a jigsaw puzzle, you have the different pieces and all the pieces you can implement very easily. Uh, and they might not be shaped regularly as in this ex picture example, but uh, they could be um, broader or smaller or, or whatever. 
So how do we develop programs in force? Um, so typically we build a domain specific language bottom up. So we have uh, our stack operators and uh, uh, dictionary words and create does and, and what have you. Um, and we build up a language that allows us to describe the problem that we uh, want to solve. Um, and we build this fr uh, from the bottom up. And then we think top down. So we want to solve a Sudoku puzzle, for example, or we want to control a robot arm. So what might be a good language to actually control a robot arm or explain the solution of a uh, Sudoku puzzle? And then uh, we, we know how the DSL looks like. And uh, then we take this DSL and um, we build our application bottom up. So we have a language where, how, where we can describe the, um, the problem in an uh, adequate, appropriate way. And we use the DSL to actually do this. Right. And so that's the fourth development. And so development and fourth, it seems to be always bottom up. You don't like to make any forward references where you say, okay, uh, let's decompose this. We explain that later. And uh, so this might be a guideline of what uh, literate force programming might look like. Um, the idea is uh, to embed force programs in markdown documents. So what is markdown? That's a very popular, simple markup language for easy text formatting. Um, so you can think of a very lightweight way to describe a HTML documents or, or things like this. Um, and the idea is that the written text uh, is still acceptable to read. And uh, so it's not like XML or HTML where you have these um, uh, space consuming begin and end tags and uh, uh, syntax that makes things different to read. Mm, but uh, the idea of uh, Markdown is that you really uh, can also read the source document in, a, in an appropriate way. And what you can do is uh, uh, you can have headlines uh, and you start a headline um, by uh, uh, putting a hash sign in front and uh, you can have uh, bold and italics by using markups as you can see double star or underscores to make things uh, uh, bold or uh, italic uh, in the final text and uh, on the right you see uh, the rendered text uh, what so what it looks like and then there is something uh, that is called fenced code blocks in fence code blocks there, you use the syntax uh, three backticks in a row and then the programming language that you want to use inside the block and you put program text in, in there and you end this fenced code block with uh, a row of three backticks. And then the renderer knows, ah, this is program text and it will style it in a different way, uh, maybe doing syntax highlighting uh, in an appropriate way uh, uh, as you wish. So it knows which programming language to choose um, by looking at the beginning of the fence block. And so you can intermix program text and, uh, and prose text that explains everything. So that seems to be a, a fine way. So um, you can use the standard tools that process mark down uh, for formatting and uh, they produce uh, PDF documents or HTML pages uh, or uh, ebook reader pages or what have you. Um, so you can use the entire Markdown tool chain to create nice looking things and your source code will be formatted in a special way. Of course, you can style this with cascading style sheets and things like this. So it's not necessary that this is uh, colored letters on, back, on black background. It could be anything else if you want to. And so what we, what this is actually the weave part that's already there. So uh, process a document like this and create some nice rendered uh, document out of it. And what we need is uh, the tangle part. And the idea is uh, to define a word markdown load or MD for short that can extract um, force programs that are inside this fence code block. Yeah, and load this. And um, so I sat down and uh, implemented this. It actually uh, went ahead and reads the file and parses, uh, not just the fence code blocks, but you can ha also have inline code. It also deals with that. 
Um, and uh, so, uh, for example, you start Swift Force and uh, uh, make it uh, load the Markdown load file. So at that point in time, you can uh, process um, Markdown documents like uh, the Hello, Hello MD that we just saw. And if we go back to the page, uh, you will see it defines two words, X, which outputs a force definition and in it, uh, which outputs uh, embed calls eggs and then uh, outputs in Markdown. And so if we look at, uh, um, after we load it, uh, hello MD with MD or Markdown load or Markdown, um, then it will uh, just extract the force part of it and loads it into the running system. And then you can invoke in it and it would output embed call eggs, which outputs a force definition. And then um, uh, in it uh, uh, resumes within Markdown. So you can actually put uh, source code in uh, Markdown files, and you can, with special load uh, functionality, you can load them, ignoring all the prose text and just processing the false uh, text, which means within the uh, published documents uh, that you give others uh, to look at, it's the actual program that runs in there and not just something that you copied and pasted uh, earlier, but you can really uh, also include tests or whatever to make sure that uh, the published program uh, is actually the right one. Okay, yeah, so that's what I wanted to tell you, uh, especially um, the way that FORCE uh, does it is top down, uh, is bottom up development. So even here in Markdown documents, you have to first define words and then you can use them afterwards uh, because they are collected in text order and not uh, assembled in some other way. Um, so uh, I, what I would like to hear from you is that a restriction that you think, well, that's acceptable, or do you think that? presenting fourth programs uh, and definitions in any order for didactical purposes is really something that you would appreciate. And um, so uh, rearranging uh, things while loading uh, such a literate program might be worth doing with fourth literate programming. So yeah, I'm open for questions. Thank you very much. Excellent, Ulrich. That, that was great. I, years ago, I did some playing around with uh, with uh, literate programming, and and uh, you know, some one of the questions that I I I I'd outputted Moby the Moby format, which was quite a hassle. And someone I remember in the audience suggested using Markdown, and that's it's a it's a great idea to to use mm -hmm. it because I think that I never followed up on the suggestion, and that's a great that's mm -hmm. a great direction to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Markdown actually is really the state of the art for simple uh, um, markup and creating very simple documents. Uh, so it's not for, well, you could use it for books, but the formatting that it provides is somewhat limited, uh, but for technical documentation, that's really great because you can read the original text still and uh, create nice looking documents afterwards. I, I, I have a comment. Um, our, our last two presenters were talking about create does and defining your own language. So in my uh, trying OS robotics language, I tried to make it, um, you know, so people can speak, you know, to the machine and, and um, you know, forward 10 feet stop is actual code. Um, instead of using the stack for parameters, you know, just make some variables so that you could say something like uh, light off or off light. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, you, and I use the word now at the end. So now would go back and look at the two variables and then that way they could intermix them and they don't be the right position on the stack, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So maybe that's also a very nice topic that we can uh, follow up on later is uh, how to build these uh, domain specific languages really. Um, and uh, what would be good practice to actually do that. So because I, I, I have some ideas of how to, I would do that and I hear you uh, talking about other ways to do it. And so, uh, yeah, to exchange uh, common practice would be really great.
Uri, okay. uh, one, one thing, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you said that uh, usually in fourth, we use bottom-up approach when we write the code. Mm -hmm. And top-down is used in, let's say, in a design phase, but we never program that way. I think mm -hmm. that actually force allows us to do even top-down programming by using uh, prototypes. So I can write the top application board, which is empty, and stepwise to, to fill words that are actually decomposing the problem to smaller things. So I think that in mm -hmm. that, that way, force is very flexible in mm -hmm. which approach we choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, my impression is that still most of the time it's, it's done bottom up, maybe only because I'm looking at final programs. And of course, I, if, I, if I'm designing this, I'm normally using something meet in the middle so I build up some language and then I, I, I have the problem statement at the top and then uh, decompose that and then somehow things meet in the middle. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I agree. That, that's actually I what I same. do as, as well from both sides. I do sides. as you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Are there any additional questions? So that's not the case. So I try to stop uh, sharing or is this still, is this still sharing? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, not anymore. And uh, so I'm switching over to the role of the sheriff uh, and